In the brief, in the previous session, we said this lesson is called recombinant DNA. What is the meaning of recombinant DNA? Modified DNA or edited DNA. DNA that contains genes from different organisms. Meaning that I will obtain the DNA of a bacterial cell and I'll insert a different gene from different organism into the bacterial DNA. Now, after the bacterial DNA is edited, it is called recombinant DNA. Actually, this was an inter introduction, but this is the core question we are going to answer. And actually we answered it yesterday. How do we find the DNA sequence of a single gene among millions of DNA fragments? Among your 46 chromosomes, 46 chromosomes, which chromosome carries the gene of insulin? And on this chromosome, what is the exact sequence of this gene that is translated into the insulin protein? Is it here or there or there or in the middle? Actually, we don't know. So how can we identify it? We said that we can use the protein itself, the insulin itself, to identify the gene. How? We said the pancreas itself produces insulin protein. I can isolate this protein. Then I can start studying it. I see that this protein is made up of amino acids. It starts always with methionine. If I ask you, what is the code on representing methionine? I hope one of you still memorizes A, A, U, G. Great, thank you. So how did he answer? Actually, every amino acid, glycine, leucine, alanine, proline, and so on. Every amino acid is represented by a certain code of a messenger RNA. According to the table of codons and amino acids, actually you can get it anytime on Google. You can see that the glycine, you will see glycine is represented by codon 123. So now you will get the messenger RNA sequence, U, A, A, C, G, A, whatever, C, 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 G, A, U. Now, from the protein or the amino acid sequence, you have the mRNA sequence. And now it's easily to identify the DNA sequence. I can ask any one of you, what is the complementary DNA sequence of the, this messenger RNA, you will tell me A pairs with T, A, C, A, T, T, G, G, C, T, G, 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 C, T, A. How did I get the DNA sequence? It is complementary to the messenger RNA sequence. So, we started by isolating the insulin protein and we, uh, we ended by, or we ended at this point where we got already the DNA sequence. Now I've identified the sequence of the gene responsible for the insulin production. All what you have left is searching your genome, searching your 46 chromosome, searching the genome for this code. And actually this will be easy. I'll cut the DNA into pieces and I'll manufacture 
this code, maybe I'll mark it by radioactive label or something, then I will let this code be mixed with your DNA after separation and check where will it bind. If it, there is bonded, if it is bonded to this piece, so here is the G. Just one. Okay, so now we have identified the required gene. What will we do with this gene? What will we do with this gene? First of all, we need, we need to make copies. We need to make copies of the gene. And this is carried out by the polymerase chain reaction. Why do we call it polymerase chain reaction? Because as you remember, the enzyme responsible for copying the DNA <laughs> molecule into new DNA molecules, if you want to copy the DNA molecule, or actually normally in our cells, when the DNA molecule is copied into two new DNA molecules, the enzyme responsible for this is the DNA poly polymerase. polymerase. So we call it polymerase because the polymerase is the enzyme responsible for the process. Chain reaction because we will carry on some cycle followed by another cycle followed by another cycle followed by another cycle. So it looks like a chain. What is happening during the polymerase chain reaction? I need you to focus with me in this video. Biology, many of its applications are widely used in the world around us. Our own oh, is separated into a piece of colony PCR screen. Actually, no. For each this is what we are going to do. PCR depends on you have identify the gene. This is the DNA sequence that you want to copy. So what will you do? You want to make hundreds of millions of First, you are going to separate it. You will have sequences here like A, T, T, C, G, and so on. And in the other side, you will have the complementary sequence, T, A, 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 G, C, and continue. Then the enzyme DNA polymerase will be used to add new nucleotides complementary to this one and new nucleotides complementary to this one. So this one will be T, A, 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 G, C, and the other one will be A, A, Sorry, A, T, 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 C, G. So you will have two identical copies of the original DNA molecule. Something exactly like the DNA replication inside the cells, but this is going to be carried on the laboratory and it is carried inside a device, not inside Asset. So first, PCR is also referred to as molecular photocopying. PCR. You have a piece of DNA. R depends on a series and you will separate it in the beginning. Actually, we are going to use heat to break the hydrogen bonds and separate the two DNA strands. 40 repeated cycles then, of DNA replication by a DNA polymerase enzyme. After each cycle, the number of the DNA polymerase is used to build the new DNA. So you started with one, and now you have two. This is the first cycle. 
Then the second cycle from two, you will get four. Four, you get eight. Eight, you get 16, and so on. Every cycle means you heal to separate, then you cool a little for the DNA polymerase to work. This is called the cycle. Double. And at the end of a 40 cycle reaction, more than one trillion copies are generated from a single copy of a DNA. So you can make one trillion copies of a strand of DNA for its cycle of the DNA. And to denature. First of all, the first step is denaturation of contaminants and the separation of the two DNA strands. Proteins. In the denaturation step, hydrogen bonds between the double strand of DNA are broken by heating the reaction to 94. So, to first, you heat to a temperature reaching 98. This will break the hydrogen bonds between the two strands and separate them. 8 degrees Celsius for 20 to 30 seconds. After the DNA strands are separated, Primers bind to a complementary sequence. Now here comes the rule of primers. What is the primer? If you remember that promoter, it was a sequence of DNA during its transcription that tells the RNA polymerase to copy this part. Also, the primer, it is like a start point for the DNA polymerase. So it tells the enzyme to copy this sequence in this direction and this one in that direction. So first, we will heat for, uh, for maybe 20 to 30 seconds until you reach temperature of 94 to separate the strands. Then the primers will be activated. Actually, we, we will cool. DNA together. template to guide DNA polymerase replication. In this step, the reaction temperature is lowered to 50. This is the required temperature for the primers to bind to the DNA and for the DNA polymerase. To 65 to Celsius copying. for 20 to 40 seconds to allow for optimal primer annealing. After the primers establish a starting point for the enzyme, DNA polymerase starts to incorporate deoxynucleotide triphosphates in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction to synthesize a new DNA strand. The temperature and extension time for this elongation step depends on the type of DNA polymerase enzyme and the target amplicon. Commonly used TAC polymerase polymerizes at a speed of 1 to 1.5 kilobases per minute and works ideally at 72 to 78 degrees. So we, we here use some kind of DNA polymerase that is activated at 72 degree to 78. It will copy 1 to 1.5 kilobase per minute. So it depends, it, it, it will act fast to copy the molecule of DNA according to the length of the strand you are copying. You will finish the cycle maybe in five minutes, six minutes, or something like this. After finishing the cycle, you started with one segment of DNA, and now you have to. Then, after this cycle is completed, you will repeat it into another cycle. You will copy the two segments into four, and so on. Another cycle ends by four. There is a final elongation step that keeps the reaction mixture at 72 to 78 degrees Celsius for 5 to 15 minutes. This ensures that any remaining single strand of DNA. Yes, yeah, one. Mr. How could the DNA polymerase find the DNA bases if it's not inside the cell? The cell? We supplied it, at, look. Here she said. We use TAC enzyme to 50 to 60 bind to a complementary sequence in the DNA template to guide DNA polymerase replication. In this step, the reaction temperature is lowered. To 50, DNA polymerase starts to incorporate deoxynucleotide triphosphate. We will add nucleotides. 
so we'll add the nucleotides to the to the laboratory. To the three nucleotides. Yes, three nucleotides will be added to the test tube. These three nucleotides, we just need the like those you get from digesting your food. You yes. have nucleotides, and all what you need is putting them in the correct form. Yes. Okay. 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 Now, this is the polymerase chain reaction. I need someone please to read, raise your hands. Okay, one followed by best. Stop polymerase yeah, chain reaction. Polymerase chain reaction, once they find a, a gene, bi uh, biologists often need to make many copies of it. A technique known as the polymerase chain reaction (BCR) allows them to do exactly that. At one end of the original piece of DNA, a biologist adds a short piece of DNA that complements a portion of the sequence. At the other end, the biologist adds another short piece of complementary DNA. This this short piece of no uh, are known as primers. Primers, because right. they prepare or prime a place for DNA polymerase to start working. So, what is the function of the primer? It prepares a place or prime a place for the DNA polymerase to start working. Thank you, Amanda. Best. The first steps in using the polymerase chain. Uh, Reaction method to copy a gene is to heat a piece of DNA which separates is its two strands, then as the DNA cools, primers bind to the single strands. Next DNA volume starts copying the region between the primers. <coughs> These copies can serve as templates to make still more copies. In this way, just a few dozen cycles of replication can produce billions of copies of the DNA between the primers. Thank you, Abbasid. Next, oh. Ahmad Gabriel. Ahmad Gabriel, are you there? You're raising your hands. Yeah, okay. Okay, wait, uh, okay. Where did Kerry Mullis and the American scientist who invented the BCR and uh, find the DNA polymerase uh, enzyme that could stand repeated the cycle of heating and cooling and cooling? Mullis found it uh, in bacteria from the hot spring of the Yellowstone National Park in the northwest western United <laughs> States. A powerful example of the uh, importance of the uh, biodiversity of uh, uh, two uh, biotechnologies. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Boys, we are hearing to a temperature of 98. What happens to your body? When your temperature becomes maybe 42, 45, you start hallucination. You are losing concentration and you may lose your life. Why? In grade nine, we said that high temperature causes denaturation of your enzymes. Your enzymes lose their shape and lose their functions in high temperatures. So we cannot use DNA polymerase from your body during the uh, PCR process. Why? We are repeating many cycles of heating and cooling. So you must have a DNA polymerase molecule from an organism that can withstand the temperature of 94, 98, things like this, or 70, 72. 78. These temperatures are not suitable to the molecules in your body. So the scientists isolated the DNA polymerase from an organism that lives originally in a very high temperature. 
He isolated the DNA polymerase required for this process from a kind of bacteria that lives originally in hot springs. So it can withstand the high temperatures that are used during the process. Okay. Now, after Mr. cutting the... Yes. How could the, if, if, if the DNA, if the hydrogen base need, a hydrogen bond need 98 uh, Celsius to break, how it, it is breaking in our body, if we can reduce this. Okay. No, actually, it is not always by the creature. We, we you know, <laughs> actually, this is great. What do we use during all the processes that are carried uh, or that are happening in, in our body every day? What is the very essential molecule that we depend on it when we get slightly high temperature? All these molecules are affected. I just said it right now. Mm -hmm. When your temperature is 42, what happens to you? Your... You begin hallucinating and your enzyme changes shapes. So if the hydrogen bond what is the rule of enzyme in our life, Iman? Last year, maybe. Enzymes mm. are substances that are considered... What is the function of a catalyst? Lower and increase. It lowers... Remember this? It lowers the activation energy, so it increases the reaction rate. Mm -hmm. So if you have a reaction that normally is carried in a temperature, very high temperature, something like a reaction between protein and water. If you put a piece of meat into water, can you make the water break down the proteins without boiling it for several hours? Yes, you. I must boil it first. Can. But if I you boil it first. The enzyme at room temperature, actually, the enzyme will make the water react with, or break the uh, meat or the protein, meat. only at thirty-seven de degrees. So a reaction like separation of, actually, this is a very good question. The separation of the DNA fragments it occurs at ninety-eight. How is it, is it carried normally in our body? Actually, using an enzyme, enzyme lower. This temperature until it reaches your body temperature. Lower the activation energy, so it will happen normally in 30, 70 minutes. Got it? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Now, after replicating the DNA, we need to combine DNA fragments, and actually, this is applicable easily by using restriction enzymes, as you remember. What is the name of this end? We said you will cut an enzyme, with a sorry, you will cut a, a, a DNA sequence by a restriction enzyme. You will cut the bacterial DNA by the same restriction enzyme. So now your DNA has a sticky end and the, the bacterial DNA has the complementary stick end, just put them together and get this magical enzyme, DNA ligase. It helps, it's like the glue. It helps the unpaired nucleotides to pair with each other. So how can we combine DNA fragments? By using, first you have to cut them by restriction enzymes, then you have to combine them by an enzyme that is called DNA ligase. I need someone to read. I lower hands, then I'll pick another. Ah, raise your hands, please, to read. A new one, Abdul Rahman Sam. Yes, Mr. Combining DNA fragments with today, technology scientists can produce custom built DNA molecules in the lab, and then scientists then insert those molecules along with the genes they carry into living cells. The first step in this sort of genetic engineering 
is to build a DNA SQL with the gene or genes you would like to insert into a cell. Machines known as DNA sci synthesizers. synthesizers can produce short pieces of DNA up to Stop seven. Me. As we just said, you can build a DNA sequence, customize it. You can use a machine that will bond the nucleotides together in the sequence you want. Now you have built a sequence of nucleotides similar to this one you just isolated from our bodies. Now I have a DNA segment. I made it by a machine known as DNA synthesizers. It synthesizes DNA, makes DNA. Continue. Up to several hundred bases in length. These synthesized sequence can then be joined to natural sequence using DNA lasers or ligase. other Actually, ligase. this is a very important enzyme. I said DNA ligase means it, it's like a glue. It helps us to join or mix DNA molecules together. Continue. Or other, other enzyme that spiles DNA together. These same enzymes make it possible to take a gene from one organism and attach it to the DNA of another organism, as shown in the figure. The resulting molecules are called recombinate DNA. Recombinate These... DNA. So the recombinate DNA now is produced by uh, taking a gene from one organism and attach it to the DNA of another organism. So now the DNA of this another organism, it contains uh, a gene from another organism. Okay, you have DNA segment from one organism and you can attach a different gene from a different organism to it. So now you have a DNA molecule that is called Huh? Recombinant, Recombinant DNA. DNA. A. Modify, it means. Uh, continue. This technology relies on the fact that any pair of complementary sequel tends to bond even if each sequel comes from a different organism. Recombinant Thank DNA. You much, yeah, oh. Who else? Raise your hands, boys. Actually, uh, Ahmad, I spoke about this the previous time. We didn't take 15.1 because it is not related to the genetic engineering. 15.1 is speaking about selective breeding, how the breeders or the people used in the past to breed different organisms with different traits to have another organism with both traits, you know? like meeting a different species of dogs, one that is small and fast, another one that is large but slow, I will breed them to get a new characteristic which is large and fast. So this was the previous lesson actually is not actually genetic engineering, it depends main, mainly on breeding, how we raise animals and we select specific uh, animals and birds According to the characters, we made them, we breed them, and we maintain their life. Okay, continue, uh, uh, Mohanad. Okay, so, <clears throat> recombinant DNA technology joining together DNA from two or more sources makes it possible to change the genetic composition of living organisms. By manipulating DNA in this way, scientists can investigate the structure and functions of G. Great. Thank you. One, one Mister, yes. When we when we put the, the new gene into the to make a yani, when we put a new gene in the body to form a new characteristic. Do we must enter it with a sticky end? When you insert a gene into any different DNA molecule. Yes. You have to cut it uh, with a sticky end cut. Why? If you cut it a blunt end, you cannot stick it again. If you cut the DNA with a blunt end, 
you cannot stick it again. If like you have a pencil, if you cut this pencil straight cut, you cannot put it back. Those two pieces cannot be put back. Even if you used uh, something to stick it again, something like a glue, it will be broken again, again easily. But if you have a pencil and you cut it a staggered cut, now you have pieces that are easily put together again. Yes, but I mean, uh, we say that the restriction enzyme is in bacteria. Do we have a restriction enzyme? So we could have a stick No, end? no. We use hundreds of different sticky enzy restriction enzymes from bacteria. The bacteria restriction enzymes, they act on any kind of DNA. Normally, we don't norm you mean normally in our body? I won't. We don't need to, to, to cut the DNA. Why why would we need to cut the DNA in our body? ايوه فاحنا ازاي بقى الستيكي اند اللي هم بيحطوها بتلزع عندنا وبتبقى عندنا احنا الجينيتيك جديده. Yes, I extract. I, I'm not inserting, uh, inserting yet in your body. I'm extracting your DNA. Then uh, so I, mean, I cut it. Yes, I cut it, then I put it back into yourself. I'm not you, giving you an injection with restriction enzyme or something like this. I work on your DNA in the lab. Then I'll insert it back, back in, in, one of, in one of your cells. But actually, this will not make any change in your body as an adult. I, if we want to uh, change any traits, we take a sperm cell, isolate a gene, work on this chromosome or gene, then put it back in the sperm. So now you have, or an egg. An office now sperm you have a different gene. A modified cell. If you made fertilization to a normal egg, now you will have a person, his first cell is modified, so all the rest, the rest of, of his cells are, are going to be modified. I can't modify cells in your body as an adult. Mm -hmm. So if you have the eggs, you have a problem in your pancreas, I cannot fix it. But I can fix your offspring. I can fix a sperm from your body, an egg from the female's body, then you will have a normal baby. Mm -hmm. But can I put you a Yes, No, I can't. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Great. Now scientists use the two, you know, uh, I'll insert a gene, I'll insert a gene into the bacterial plasmid, then I put it back into the bacteria, but now the bacteria will not express the gene. It is not identified for 